passed out here from the smell? No one has, has ever passed, passed out, out in the I'm caves. about to. The reason this is one of the stinky caves is because it, these are our stinky cheeses. These are all cheeses that we wash the outside of the rinds. These cheeses, I always joke that they're, it's funny that they are the stinkiest because they're the only cheeses that get a bath. So this cheese here, this is a Poisse, a famous French cheese. You can find it a lot of places, but normally when you purchase this cheese, it's going to be wrapped in plastic. It's just been sent on a boat or by air and the cheese is kind of just dead, lifeless. You'll get a lot of spikes in flavor of ammonia. It's and orange. Unpleasant things. It's orange. It's orange. That's another thing that happens from washing the cheese. That's the development of the bacteria that it's ripening on the outside and it's going to have that bright orange color. It's really beautiful to look at inside. It's a kind of buttery yellow paste. What does that, uh, what does that cost? Uh, if you were to get one of those like wheels. I think these are $18 really? for a wheel. Really? Yeah. Okay, so that's a nice treat. This is a great treat. This is something I love to serve at parties on its own because it's hard to eat one just on your own for some people. Beth, are you called a, uh, are you a cheese monger? Is that your term? Um, I mean, there's yeah, a fish you, monger, you, you're yes. a cheese monger? If you sell cheese, you're a cheese monger. Well, How? you want to see the next cake? Yes, please. Right? I'd love to. Yeah. Let's go. After you. Okay. Right, you go right ahead. So, so yeah. from the novice eye, I would say these were all goat cheeses and blue cheeses. Well, you're half right. There are a lot of goat cheeses. Um, no blues in here, so you might get a little bit of ambient blue mold attaching to the, to the cheeses. What this cave is dedicated to are the bloomy rind category of cheeses. So things like Brie, Camembert, they all have the same mold growing on the outside. And this is one of a lot of people's favorite caves because you really can see the ripening process in action. Well, let me show you a few examples of, uh, of some cheese. And, that's sort of in progress here. Yeah. Let me see if we can get a good example. Um, look at those. those so are this fantastic. is this is a very young. You're talking about using the balance on your cheese plate. This is a really young balance. Sometimes they arrive to us um, so wet that we actually need to dry them in a in a loud, windy refrigerator. Can they over ripen? Sure. Yeah. Definitely. But that's the benefit of having the cakes here is we can pull them up when they're ready and we don't have ah. to. We sell them when they're ready rather than putting them out because we have to sell them. Yeah. All right, so these are all our natural rinded cheeses, and you may get a kind of almost eyeball stinging sensation. That's very similar to that first one. Yeah, to that first this one even now. more so. These are cheeses that are really breathing out um, as they ripen, they, you get that ammonia in the that air. Is amo that yeah, is it's ammonia, that is ammonia. It's ammonia, yeah. and it's a good thing because you can imagine if you had a cheese wrapped in plastic and just stuck in a refrigerator, right. that stuff's still going on, but it's all going back into the cheese. You don't always eat all the cheese that you have at home. Um, best advice is to make sure that it's not being suffocated, but that it can't dry out. So you see, that's the uh, main that's, that's the that's, trick, yeah. That's the problem with cheese, and so to solve that problem, you want to maybe wrap it in parchment paper or wax paper. But there is, there's a nurturing there's a special, process to yeah, it. Yeah, you want to check in on it and make right. sure that the cheese isn't getting, you know, too funky in there. And when you unwrap it, you should always wrap it in something fresh, you know, change the wrapping on I it. I see. And that's going to help the cheese to keep longer. Those are little things you can do to prolong the life of it. But that's a, you bought it to eat it. So right. when people buy a hunk of cheese and say, oh, I let it sit in my fridge for three months and now it's bad, what did you expect? Really the best advice is to just buy less cheese more often. Got it, really? that is an important yeah. note. Yeah. What else is happening in here? We've got these funny things. They yeah. almost look like medieval wrecking balls. This is a Cacciacavallo di Bufala. It's a buffalo milks uh, provolone, basically. Just look at that thing. It's like a, me it feels like a melon. Yeah, yeah. There's oh, and how about these guys? The, this is a Pecorino Ginepro, so it's been washed in a balsamic Ooh. vinegar that's aged in juniper barrels. Um, it's It's got a really nice, that's one that we like to pair with gin a lot of times. Um, and you'll see, I mean, a lot of variation in the molds Ooh. on top. People come in through and brush these and make sure that they're not getting out of control. You eat the rind? Absolutely, yeah. Most of the, I mean, this is the, this is sort of the controversial rind room. So when you, the Bloomy Run caves where we saw the brie and things like that, everyone, I say, yes, it's definitely funny. eat the rind. And here, that's where it becomes like, it's a personal preference. Right, well, you know, it's funny. I always, I, I think sometimes it helps to let the buyer know which, uh, you know, which cheeses you can eat the rind. Because a lot yeah. of people cut off the rind it's and you're... always a personal choice. Wax, foil, cloth. Don't eat those. They're not food. Don't eat them. Don't right. eat those. But what else is
This is called Hudson Flower, and it's only made at Murray's. It Boy, starts is that lovely. as a, that is just beautiful. Yeah, it's a really lovely for a cheese, cheese plate. Really, really lovely for a <laughs> cheese plate. Um, super versatile for pairing as well. I love this with a sweet vermouth just on the rocks. It actually starts as a cheese called Kinderhook Creek. And then what we've done is coated it in hops flowers, uh, lemon thyme, Ooh. rosemary. Great. Right. Well, that's wonderful. Let's see another Save cave. the best for last. You got it. The cheddar. Wonderful. Let's do it. Okay. After you. Okay. Yeah. What else is in here? Um, we've got some aged cheeses like Pleasant Ridge Reserve here, a great Wisconsin cheese. We've got you know, 90 pound wheels of Comte, the Gruyere. Fantastic. These are cheeses that need a warm environment, the high humidity. So temperature here is different than where we were. Definitely, it's yeah. It's warmer a little bit here. warmer in yeah. here. So you want that humidity yeah. to, to sort of bloom yeah, out Yeah, you cheese. don't want these cheeses drying out, cracking. You want them alive and developing more and more. But cheese people, we like to use very approachable words. If something smells like feet, we'll say it smells like feet. Right. Feet is perfect. <laughs> Feet's perfect. What else is in here? Um, well, we have some cloth-bound cheddars. A lot of what happens in here, we do wash some of these cheeses. Do but you? Yeah. These, these are cheeses that we source more for flavor. So we'll go and taste through several batches of cheddar to find just the right one. Well, Beth, this, is a, this has been such a treat to be in here with you. I mean, I think that everyone has their own personality when it comes to cheese and it's a it's a wonderful thing to talk about and the fact that you've been able to share it with us we've really really enjoyed it today yeah we're happy to share it thanks a lot i'm going to go buy some cheese now all right okay